Um, the next five minutes slot is shared by Deputies Mick Wallace and Luke Mink Flanagan. Deputy Flanagan first. Is, yeah. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Blasca and Carla. Um, uh, we seem to be in a new uh, enlightened period uh, in Irish politics now where uh, semi-states are going to be opened up to openness and transparency and uh, this is uh, basically uh, proven supposedly by the fact that Irish water is now going to come under free of information. Well, the reality is this wouldn't have happened in the first place only for the fact that the government were hammered into doing it because it became just absolutely ridiculous that you wouldn't do it. So now you're going down that road. But the facts are you wouldn't have done this if there wasn't pressure from the public. Now, why stop there? What's so special about Irish water that you'd allow it to be open to freedom of information? And as uh, Deputy Stanley uh, has hinted at there, uh, why not do it with Quilche as well? What's so different about Quilche? Even Fianna Fáil are telling us now that we need to get a less minimalist approach to freedom of information. So, I mean, should the dam has broken at this stage, if that's the case. So, why not do the same thing with Quilche? Because... Can you imagine a situation where someone comes to you as a member of Dáil Éireann and alleges that there is fraud being committed against a semi-state company, and then as a public representative you go and try and do something about it, and you look and you discover that every avenue that should be available to you is blocked off, whether it be the Comptroller Auditor General, whether it be Freedom of Information, sorry, no, you can't get the information. So anyways, I suppose, then you'd have a look. Maybe I'll have a chat to the minister. Maybe the minister can do something for me. Sure, okay, it's not open to freedom of information, but he is the boss. So we uh, went and we spoke to the minister, and guess what the minister told us? The minister told us that he himself, the boss, couldn't get information out of Quilcha about an alleged fraud against our company because it was commercially sensitive. Now, are we meant to accept that, that a minister, who in effect is the boss of a company, is not privy to information that it has because it is commercially sensitive? It's a farce. I met the same thing on Roscommon County Council when I was a member of the corporate policy group. We were meant to be in control of the council. And you, I am told, sorry, you can't have certain information because it's commercially sensitive. We were meant to be running the place, and we couldn't get the information of our own money. So why with Irish water, and why not with Quilcha? And my office is currently preparing a bill that will change that. And now that you're all open to Thank openness you and transparency, you'll probably vote for it, won't you? Good morning, uh, Thank you, Lassen Paula. Two and a half minutes. Uh, I now call the Minister to reply. Good morning, uh, Lassen Paula. Can I thank deputies for their contribution and for their support for this uh, motion? Um, of course, Deputy Free characterised it as a climb down. Um, he wasn't here when we debated the actual FOI uh, amendments at committee stage, where I gave a commitment that while I have, and I want to explain this very clearly because a number of deputies raised it in, in relation uh, to the commercial semi states. The default position of the new regime, to borrow a uh, phrase from, um, from Deputy Wallace, will be that every public body will be included. The excluded ones are commercial semi states. Either we determine we're going to have a commercial, publicly owned uh, commercial state sector, or we won't. You can't have a commercial semi-state, no other country does, where they're f uh, open to uh, a degree of transparency that their rivals are not. The rivals will put in the FOIs. That's not the way it works. They're accountable under the Companies Act as a commercial company. Now, I've said, when I was uh, debating this at committee, that where there are operating in monopoly positions, that argument wouldn't hold. And that's why I said I would look at uh, uh, dealing with the monopoly uh, companies, including Irish Water, when the new legislation was enacted. I'm now fast-tracking that because the enactment of the legislation is taking a bit longer and the, um, the issues that have arisen have become more acute and I think we need to address them. That's why I'm extracting those, but we will be having a full debate on FOI generally. Um, in, in the other point made by Deputy O'Farrell in terms of the, the commentary of, of um, Mr. Fitzgerald, I think a very comprehensive rebuttal of that uh, is available in today's Irish Independent from the Minister for the Environment, Community and Local Government. Um, factually dealing with issues as opposed to assertions that are made by people. I think people need to objectively listen 
not hear just the noise, but the facts, and drill down to the facts. Because the objective of this whole process in terms of Irish water is to take 34 disparate water providers to establish one um, world-class water utility that will provide a safe um, and an adequate water supply to the people of Ireland. Uh, and that's what's, what's in train here. Um, the point made by Deputy Stanley, um, I've argued his exclusion of the semi-states. Now, I'm not sure, the th and I've argued this position, I've debated this position uh, with your colleagues on the, on the Finance Committee and the Public Expenditure Committee, whether it is the Sinn Féin view that you're in favour of public enterprise or not, but you can't spancel public enterprise and expect it to thrive. I I'm in favour of my party by default are in favour of public enterprise, but we need to have them operate on a, on a level playing field with uh, private companies. You can't operate otherwise. So, I mean, it's a code to kill off state enterprises to pretend that you can put a new burden of regime on them. That, that Monopolies, I think you're, you have a fair point, and we debate that, and, and we look at that in, in the context of the new legislation. Uh, I strongly agree with you on, in relation to the role of the Oireachtas. We need to have, and I think it's happening, vigorous sectoral committees holding state agencies and ministers to account. I think that is happening, and I think we need to resource it better. We need to have, and this will evolve over time, having the, the sectoral committees doing their, their work, giving them resources to do that, I think would be very good. And to rebalance the imbalance that I've always argued uh, as a parliamentarian that exists between executive and parliament. Uh, we need to m move much more to a, a European model. And all that we're doing in terms of FOI, in terms of accountability, in terms of the lobbying legislation uh, and so on is important in that. Uh, and it goes to the points made by, uh, I mean, Deputy Flanagan, uh, again, his dismissive notion of the semi-states. I actually support semi-states and semi-state industry in that. Uh, and in terms of FOI commitment, yes, we are, we're, we're putting, we're putting, we are, we are, we are putting, we are putting in place. On a, on a point, Deputy Flanagan did not dismiss semi-states. Major facts, right. Point, Major facts, right. Major facts, right. Major facts, right. I see, Deputy Flanagan, through the chair, through the chair, Deputy Flanagan, he thinks he's on the back of a lorry in, in this place, and he can scream down people who, who, whose views he doesn't agree with. Now, I heard him say that he wanted to put into place a regime that, in my judgment, would kill off the semi-state sector. That's not my view, and it's not something I'm going to support. But in terms of the general, the general, the ge stop shouting people down. This is Parliament. You're not on the back of a lorry. Stop shouting people down. You're not on the back of a lorry, for God's sake. This is our national Parliament. People are entitled to hear and, and be heard. The same as I listened to you, didn't shout you down. Now, in terms of the, the, the broad concept of what we're doing, um, we are, the commitment I brought to government last year is to join the Open Government um, Partnership, which is a cutting edge set of measures to have transparency in everything we do. Part of what I want to do in that is to have what I've described as open data. So FOI, I hope over time, will be obsolete because open data means that we should have all information in the public domain as a matter of course. And we, we have to work towards that. And that's the objective that I've set for the government. We're drawing up our national plan in relation to the open government, um, uh, the open government partnership. And I'm pleased, last I like to conclude on this, to say that our efforts to date have been such that um, we are now going to host the European open government data um, annual meeting which will take place in May, so that the cutting edge countries uh, in relation to open, um, open government, FOI, and all these things will be here. And I should say, at the last one in London, I was asked to give um, the presentation because the legislation we've crafted on whistleblowers is regarded as world class. So all these things are being addressed, and I thank deputies for their support. Well, Margaret, uh, that concludes the debate.